Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's session, Getting to Know Honkaku Shochu, presented by the Japan Sake and Shochu Makers Association, hosted by Wayne Shannon. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us.、Uh, what is it? We've got a couple more minutes. We'll just maybe wait. There's a few more people that are, that are down to join. So,、uh, yeah, just bear with us. And before I go on, we've got the four shots to the taste. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to run through them.、Uh, just if you want to join me in that process, entirely up to you.、Um, but I'm going to taste、uh, them straight. Just neat. I'm going to be drinking them from wine glasses. And I'm also going to use the Nakamura、uh, shochu, the sweet potato shochu. And I'm going to have it with some hot water and I'm going to have it with some cold water. And if you're not sitting beside an industrial strength espresso machine, maybe take the time now to heat up some water and,、uh, and then you can kind of join in. And the reason for that is it just really highlights how phenomenally diverse this product is and how many amazing flavors will come out of it. Um, anyway, so the, the purpose of, of what we're the, the project is Shotsu is Japan's national spirit, and there's still quite a, a bit of misunderstanding about it. I think maybe sometimes it falls a little bit second fiddle to, to sake or nihon shu, as it's、uh, as it may be more correctly known.、Um, those of you who are based in Japan will know that sake literally just means alcohol. And in many places, if you go up to a, a bar and ask for sake, if you're in a restaurant and you ask for sake, you'll probably get Nihon Shu, which is the, the beverage made from rice. It's,、uh, it's brewed. But to show you how different Kyushu is, if you're saying Fukuoka, you may be 50 50 likely to get either Shochu or sake. And then there's a line sort of halfway through the islands where you will always, below that line, south of that line, you're always just going to get Shochu. That's what they will always assume that you're talking about. It's just a massive part of the culture down there. And, and part of what we're trying to do, I guess, is, is help to, to tell those stories and showcase that kind of、um, why they are so passionate about it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll agree it'll come through. In the video.、Um, I mean, it's another part of, of, of Shochu is this we're going to be talking about Honkaku Shochu, which kind of translates, Honkaku kind of translates as、uh, genuine, original, the, 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 real, the, the real stuff. And we kind of wanted to help to differentiate. There, there are different styles and they have different、um, benefits, I guess. But Honkaku Shochu is, is single distilled. And what that means is you're going to get a lot more of the original character coming through. It's, it's not the same as the continuous distillation process that is used to make a lot of things、uh, that can end up being fairly generic.、Uh, it, it's. Every time the, the product goes through the distillation, distillation process, it will least lose some of the characteristics that made it quite special. And that's why sometimes people say something like mass produced vodka has no flavor.、Um, it's it's、uh, kind of a shame because good vodka has great flavor, but trying to change that perception and make sure that Hong Kong Kashochu doesn't get sort of sucked into that world because it really doesn't deserve to be there.、Um, And I think probably another thing is、uh, we're also trying to help to differentiate between the, the soju, which is a spirit that is made from,、uh, from it has its own stories from, from Korea,、uh, and Honkaku Shochu, which has similarities, but really shouldn't be thought of in the same sentences. Uh, anyway, before I go on, we do also obviously have the opportunity for some questions. So please,、um, if you do have questions, if I, if I need to reiterate something or if I go over, if, if my Kiwi accent gets a little bit hectic at times,、um, please just type in a message. I'll,、uh, I'll, I'll get to the question as, as soon as possible.、Uh, cool. Well, the shot you went out about a week ago now. Uh, if everybody still has some left, hopefully some people haven't consumed it all. If you have, I, I'm sure you enjoyed it. But let's start with the, the sort of fun part of it. Well, let's do some tasting. And what I'm going to do is you, everybody's got these, these booklets and things like that. These booklets are awesome that the Japanese Sake and Shochu Makers Association, the people who have, have put this project, that kind of backed it from behind. This,、uh, these books are great. 
and uh, I hope everyone's had a chance to read through them and, and check them out because if you have and it kind of washed over a little bit, please reread them afterwards if you have time after you've watched the video because things should make, if I've done my job, things will be clearer. Um, and everyone should have one of these as well. So I'm going to go from top to bottom uh, and, and tastings of two. And one of them will be sweet potato. One of them will be something made from something else. And the, the point being to really sort of highlight that they do taste very, very different. And as a general rule, if you know what to look for, it should be really easy to see what it is that this stuff has been made from. And starting off, we're going to we're gonna start off with uh, Nakamura uh, Shuzo, which is the sweet potato shochu. Um, assuming everyone's joining in with me and I'm not just drinking alone again, um, I'm drinking from wine glasses, uh, whatever you have is uh, is fine. And I'm drinking neat um, just because it does sort of help to highlight. Uh, it, there's nothing you can't hide, basically. And swirling it around, if you've got that type of glass, get your nose in there, take a deep breath. And uh, because shochu as a general rule, the spirit alcohol content is about 26%. It's a little bit more intense than wine. It's a, a lot less more, uh, intense than, say, whiskey. But swirling it around should help to open it up. And straight away, when you smell it, for me, I'm getting a certain amount of, of uh, anise. I'm getting a, maybe a hint of a smokiness coming through. I'm also probably getting a certain amount of vanilla and even maybe caramel. But all of those sorts of things I can also kind of link maybe sort of ma almost mashed potatoes or slowly roasted potatoes I guess and when I sip it I get more of that anise there's a certain amount of bitterness coming through but I definitely kind of I'm, I'm if I had to choose a spirit sorry an ingredient I'm leaning towards sweet potato and the reason for that is maybe it's a little hard if if you're not training in uh tasting the way that a sommelier will that's why we've got the one beside it which is uh which is tempeh from Fukuoka and this one is made with with uh barley <laughs> so I was going to say rice that's not this one this one is made with barley and when you smell this and you smell them side by side, it's, it, this is more obviously sweet potato by being able to have it to compare. And here I'm getting a lot of uh, cereal, this creaminess. It almost makes me think of oat milk. Uh, so that kind of makes sense if you're thinking about barley. And yeah, I, I think it is a very, um, there's, a, there's a little bit more probably intensity coming through. Both of these are examples of Honkaku Shochu. So really it's not about, uh, this, is, this is not about whether you prefer one to the other. These are all really, really good examples. What we're trying to do is sort of highlight the fact that because these things have been made in a single distillation, it's more obvious that the what they're made from and the other thing is about that single distillation process almost every single distillery who makes honkaku shochu it, it is single distillation there's one maybe two that actually they still use the same style of, of still but the uh the distillation they, they do it more than once that's just up to them they're still uh but generally single distillation so if you've, if you've got any comments or preferences, please type them in the chat. Um, if I don't see them straight away, I'll definitely see them soon. Um, and it looks like a whole lot of people saying hello. Hi. Um, good to see some names there that I recognize. So uh, thanks again for everybody for joining in. And, uh, and thanks again, JSS, for, for helping us put this together. So with... Uh, what I deliberately try to do, I guess, with when we did these tasting notes is, is keep things kind of vague. Uh, there's sometimes people stress out and, and you might say, oh, I taste this and then they stress out. What you taste is what you taste. Uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, and the same thing, I guess, kind of goes with the food matches that I put down for these ones. The because shochu is so versatile in the way that it's served, the heat that you might be approaching it with or the, the, um, 
whether you're having it over ice or with soda, it will be very, very versatile. All I can really say is um, give it a go. And, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be happy. So um, the next one that we're moving on to, let me just double check what I've, uh, make sure I'm saying the right things. Okay, so this is the Kokobu. And Kokobu Distillery is uh, is another sweet potato emo shochu. And I'm not sure if you guys get this too, but what I always get is a really strong uh, rose petal from this. And uh, there's, a, there's a lychee that comes through. And the, the idea that this comes from sweet potato is really quite trippy to me. I think it's just testament to, to how amazing this distiller is. And yeah, I mean, if, if you're a wine drinker and you drink Gewurz, Tramina, this is probably a pretty good place for you to start. Um, but yeah, it's there's just so much... I mean, I don't think a lot of people would normally associate rose and lychee with potatoes, but if you let me know in the chat if, if this is what you're getting, but this is every time I taste this one, it's it's uh, it's it's all about rose and lychee. And when I taste it, though, this is this is when I'm starting to think more about the 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 fact that this is obviously made from sweet potato. Um, in Japan, if you're here quite often in, in winter, you'll see the roasted uh, sweet potatoes available that you can just buy one roasted sweet potato uh, at the supermarket. It's a awesome snack, chuck some butter on or olive oil. Um, that is the kind of rose pink kind of red sweet potato kind of flavor that I'm, that I'm getting with the cockaboo. And the last one that we've got to taste uh, of, of these ones, this one is the Sengetsu. And so Sengetsu was made with rice. And when I smell that, I'm smelling uh, vanilla. I'm smelling uh, the kind of smells that I would associate with white rice when you've just opened up the rice steamer. And uh, there's a certain creaminess that comes through. And yeah, a riciness. Now, um, because we've only got kind of 10 minutes for the tasting, um, what I've got here as well like I said, it's good to have an industrial strength espresso machine. These are, these are both uh, the Nakamura. And you have the option, there are so many options of how you choose to drink the shochu, but this I really wanted to do just to sort of highlight how heat affects things. Uh, it's definitely going to affect food pairing as well. Um, I don't necessarily recommend hot beverages with sashimi. If you have that in your mouth at the same time, it might be, might taste like the fish has been sitting in the sun. If that's a good thing for you, great. Uh, not for me. But, um, but something hot, like a, a, a hot sake or a hot shochu with, mixed with hot water and pizza or cheese, the, the oils are going to be cleansed. So it's, it's, it's also going to highlight different flavors and tastes on the spectrum that is available on that shochu. And yeah, so I'll, I'll start off with the, the shochu mixed with water. Uh, it helps to dilute it. It helps to open things up. Uh, if you're a whiskey drinker, um, most, most whiskeys will come off the still in the sort of high 50s. And then the, the distiller will just dilute it down to whatever they think is best, which usually is around about 40%. Kind of the same sort of thing you can do at home where people might just add a splash of water into their neat spirit. What it does is it allows flavors and the flavor compounds to open up and be liberated. And it will also sort of soften some of the harshness that you might perceive from, uh, from the, the spirit. And shochu, as a general rule, is around about 26%. So it's already softer than your average uh, straight whiskey. But um, when you, before when I tasted this one, just, just neat, it was kind of anisey, uh, smoky. And with the, with the chilled water, I think for, for me, the smokiness is being highlighted. This creaminess, it's definitely smoother. Uh, I would say definitely creamier. It's, um, it's very, very lush. And, uh, and in the back of my mind, I'm sort of thinking that by drinking, drinking a spirit with water, I'm hydrating as I go through. So that kind of is a, maybe a bit of a health tip. Now, hot. If you have a smell, um, about 70% of your sense of, uh, of flavor comes through your nose and your retronasal passages. So it's always, that's the reason why these glasses can be so good. But if you're drinking hot, 
the heat actually exaggerates the impact of the spirit. So that might end up burning you if you drink it from a wine glass, if you're drinking it hot. That's why these cups are just so good. Um, and what it will do for me when I'm having this hot, I, I'm getting more of the roasted notes coming through. I'm even, I'm, I'm getting banana. Uh, there's still the creaminess there, but it, the bitterness that I was tasting a little bit for is, before is kind of smoothed out a little. And yeah, banana, um, maybe some tropical fruit aspects, but I don't think I was getting that when I was just tasting it neat. And you'll see in the video, which we're, uh, we're about to start very shortly, but there are so many different ways that you can, you can try uh, shochu and if you've had shochu before and you weren't such a fan um, I had a lady who came in the other day and she told me she didn't like shochu my assumption is that anything made by someone who cares is going to be pretty amazing and if someone has written off an entire category it's probably because they unfortunately didn't have a good example of it and this person I, I gave the lady a little taster of something which was actually from Nakamura Shuzo and she flipped she was like I don't like shochu I love shochu it just happened that quickly she's like oh my god that's amazing and that kind of experience and the passion that you will see in the video from the producers is really what we're hoping that we can kind of get across so we can help to uh, spread the the good word the lovely stories and 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 help to to get people who who would otherwise be drinking shochu, uh, aware of it so that they can start to drink the shochu and, uh, and support the industry, support the business and everything like that. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done with the tasting. Um, please, uh, I'll go through all of the, the chat that's, uh, that's come through when we're watching the video. If you have any questions, if anything comes up, please let me know and we'll kind of bang those out towards the end. But uh, yeah, I'm, we're very, very excited to show you this. It was, uh, it was a very fun project to work on. And if you haven't been to Kagoshima, I'm going back as soon as possible. Uh, now, should we move on to the video then? I'm near the southern tip of mainland Japan. Kagoshima city has been on my radar for as long as I can remember. But though I've been to Kyushu before, this is my first time here. don't have to be in town for long before you notice that. And I don't mean the boat. Sakurajima Island, a very active volcano. A lady in a shop said yesterday that we can expect a casual eruption soon. Now, I don't know what that means, and to be honest, I don't think I want to find out what that means, but I do acknowledge it will add a certain drama to the proceedings. Anyway, we are not here to talk about volcanology. We're here in Kyushu to talk about shochu. Now, if sake can lay claim to be Japan's national beverage, then shochu can definitely lay claim to being its national spirit. For those unfamiliar with sake, it's a brewed beverage made with fermented rice. Shochu, on the other hand, is a distilled spirit. Spirits can have a much higher potential alcohol so shochu falls into the same category as whiskey, vodka, and rum. Though there are many crossovers with these other spirits, shochu is a distinct and delightful beverage worthy of the attention of sommeliers, bartenders, and consumers the world over. Another thing to mention is that Korean soju and shochu are not the same thing. To keep things simple, Korean soju comes from Korea, Japanese shochu, Japan. Both are spirits, pronunciation is similar, but they really are very different beverages. Shochu can be made from many things. Rice, barley, sugar are some of the most common. The thing we hear in Kagoshima will concentrate on what they do best. Imo shochu, sweet potato shochu. We are in what is known as Kagoshima Prefecture, but jump back 200 years when the area was run by samurai and we'd be in the Satsuma domain. The Satsuma lords were some of the most powerful in Japan. And to this day, many brands and places are linked to these guys. A geographic indicator, or GI, is a status granted by the WTO that allows a kind of protection from misuse or imitation. When you see certain words on a label, you have a guarantee that the contents have been produced to certain standards. 
champagne, tequila, scotch, parmesan cheese are all examples. Considering the history and how unique the local Imo Shochu is, it was only natural when a GI was awarded to the area in 2005, it was named Satsuma GI. There are about 118 producers and it is 100% sweet potato. To qualify, all ingredients, including water, all production and storage, need to come from and occur in Kagoshima Prefecture. There are roughly 60 approved varieties of potato used in Imo Shochu, but potatoes aren't native to the area. Originating from southern Peru and northwestern Bolivia, it was through the Ryukyu Kingdom, what is now known as Okinawa. Potatoes arrived in 1705, brought in by a sailor called Riemon. Riemon planted seeds and shared them with his neighbors, and potatoes began to thrive in the area. In the 1730s, there was a large crop failure, but the potato fields survived, and the area where they were planted avoided a massive famine. He didn't have a family name, but after his death, in recognition of his contribution, he was given the name Maeda Riemon. Potato became so associated with the region, it became known as the Satsuma potato. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
で熟成させるわけですよね。はい。So maybe about fifty-five days. はい。うん。うん。Basically, liquids boil at different temperatures, water at 100 degrees, and alcohol at 78.37 degrees. Heat the liquid up somewhere between and catch the vapor, now you have a spirit. The science of distillation may have arrived in Japan from Korea, but most likely it was another gift from those Okinawan sailors. While Sasayama-san shows me their pot still, we're joined by the chief distiller himself, Yasuda Nobuhisa. He kindly explains the two techniques of distillation used to produce Honkaku Imo Shochu. Atmospheric pressure distillation tends to produce punchier, richer flavors, while reduced pressure or vacuum distillation, which lowers the boiling point of alcohol, tend to be milder, with a more floral character. Yasuda-san is a bit of a legend in the world of Honkaku Shochu, a certified master. So I had to pull him aside to ask more. My first question was, what does he love the most about making imo shochu? Kagoshima no imo shochu wa, ano yasai de tsukutta shochu desu. Hoka no shochu wa desu ne, okome, mugi, kukurui de tsukutta shochu desu yo ne. Kagoshima dake ga yasai de tsukutta ano shochu naun desu. Dakara hijou ni sono, ma, tokushu na shochu dea nai ka to omimasu, sekai demo. Um, how do you feel about uh, Honkaku Shochu for the, the people of the area? Kagoshima dewa satsumai wa mukashi kara okume wa ano zeikin de toreretan desu kedo satsumai mo wa zeikin dewa toreretan nakatta. Naze ka to yuto kusatchau kara desu. Dakara sore o yukou ryo shite Kagoshima no hito tachi ga shochu ni shitari sore o fukushoku ni shite a few minutes with Yasuda-san was never going to be enough. There is such an obvious wealth of knowledge, and I'm hoping to share a glass or two with him sometime in the near future. After distillation is complete, the newly created shochu is stored and matured. When it's good to go, some last minute checks and the end product can make its way to happy customers. So, I've just arrived here at Koriyama Hachiman Jinja. Now, the film crew, they don't actually arrive until tomorrow, but we've been given an opportunity to be shown around here, and it's an opportunity too good to miss, so, because uh, there's a story that I really, really wanted you to know. People come here to pray for various things, success at business, uh, passing exams, that kind of thing. But the shrine also has another claim to fame. In the late 16th century, uh, there was a, shall we say, less than flattering review of the hospitality of the, of the head priest. And that review also doubles as the oldest written reference to shochu in the country. It's not just the Japanese gods that enjoy a good session. Uh, the priests definitely get in on the fun as well. In 1954, repair workers here at the shrine were uh, surprised to discover a message left to them by fellow carpenters in 1559. And those carpenters weren't happy. At the end of a hard day's work, said carpenters were so incensed the priest didn't share any of his stash of shochu with them, they felt compelled to record their outrage. The temple master is very stingy. Us carpenters not given a single drop of shochu. What an annoying situation. Though this passive-aggressive complaint didn't land them a drink, it wasn't completely in vain. Their handiwork is recognized as a designated, important cultural property of Japan. It took nearly 400 years to uncover the complaint, which suggests at least two things. One, these ghosts can be proud of their work. It was close to four centuries before repairs were necessary. And two, they were too indirect in their feedback. 
It is very common practice to leave an offering of shochu out for the gods at any shrine or temple. Keeping an eye on Sakurajima, just to make sure there's no need for any eruption-related changes of plans, I move from a fairly large team to what is practically the one-man band of Nakamura Shinya. Here we can learn about the wonderful world of Koji. One of the things sake and shochu production have in common is the use of kojikin, which is a type of mould. Mould might sound a bit weird to some people, but think of it like this. Without it we wouldn't have soy sauce, cheese, and we wouldn't have this beautiful beverage that is shochu. Put simply, alcoholic fermentation requires sugars and yeast. Grapes and other fruits contain naturally occurring sugars, and yeast strains exist practically everywhere. Potato, even the sweetest potato, contains starch, which the yeasts can't metabolize, so this starch needs to be broken down into fermentable sugars before alcoholic fermentation can begin. This is where koji comes in. It breaks the starch in the sweet potato down into sugar. Making koji is a multi-day process of hot, hard work. But once it's ready, it is transferred to tanks where yeast and water are added. For the next 8 to 10 days, the yeast multiplies, processing the sugars the koji creates, until there are so many yeast cells, it's time to introduce them to their new friend, sweet potato. So, does this soil, does, does it come from Sakurajima, the volcano? Hambon. Hambon, mm. really? Potatoes going from here, they get washed in here. Ah, okay, okay. So this is, this is where the potatoes are getting steamed. Okay. And how long does it take to steam the potatoes? Ah, okay. The reference to magma isn't too far from the truth. As the yeast does its business, things can get pretty hectic. That's pretty amazing. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, feels a little dangerous. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Wow. Thank you for showing us that. That was, that was very unexpected. Oh, yeah. You're a bad child. <laughs> like I mentioned before, unlike mass produced spirits made through the continuous distillation technique, Honkaku is exclusively made in a pot still with a single distillation. I asked Nakamura san what makes this one shot method so special. え、本格焼酎は1回切りの蒸留なんですね。なので、それまで作り上げた麹であったり、さつまいもであったりっていうものを1回切りの蒸留でその味わいをダイナミックに出すっていうところが本格焼酎の一番の魅力だと思ってます
作っていくっていうことが味わいの中のやっぱり滑らかさ柔らかさ優しさっていう部分そのテクスチャーの部分を非常に重要な部分になるのでその麹の作り方をやっぱりおろそかにしてはいけないなっていうふうに自分は思ってます。昔は当たたり前だったんですねでもそれがやっぱり機械化が進むにつれてみんなどんどんやっぱり簡略化機械化っていうふうに流れていったでも自分たちはやっぱりこの麹っていうものを昔ながらの手作りでやっていくっていうことが結果的に麹にとって一番いい、えー、味わいであったり発酵であったりっていうところに役立つと自分たちは理解しています。What is your favorite part about working, making shochu? 鹿児島の中で、あの晩酌、つまりお酒を飲むということを誰やめとか誰やみっていう言い方をするんですね。これは誰っていうのは疲れるっていうこと。でやめるっていうのは、えー、止めるっていうこと。つまり疲れを癒す。それが焼酎を飲むということなんですね。これが鹿児島の文化であって。お酒を飲んで一日の疲れを癒すそして一緒に飲んで笑い飛ばすそういう力っていうのがお酒にあると思っているんですねでそれがやっぱり焼酎の文化であり魅力であり一番の楽しみ方だと思ってます It is such an honor to meet the passionate people who produce the things we often take for granted One of the things I truly love about my job is the privilege to tell the stories of these craftsmen and women to my guests Now Time to get back to Kagoshima City for the next piece of the Imo Shochu puzzle. We've spent a little bit of time learning what Shochu is made from. We've spent a little bit of time learning how it's made. To be honest, that's only part of the fun. There's,、uh, there's a little bit of enjoyment to be had from drinking it too. So, to do a little bit more research, we've come to a bar. Waso. これは、えー、枕崎の、えー、薩摩酒造さんの黒白波の新酒、出来たてのほやほやです。Straight away you can tell what it's made from. So that single distillation is just, is just so obvious. It, it's clearly sweet potato that we've got here. The, the depth and the width on your palate, it's, this, is, this is beautiful. So, second up, we've got shochu on the rocks, which is what I would tend to order when I'm drinking shochu. Uh, so, please tell me about this one. これは私の焼酎の原点。全く三十歳までお酒飲めなかった私が。こんなに美味しい焼酎があるんだって出会った始まりの焼酎なんで、ぜひ飲んでみてください。あ、uh, uh, sounds good. Wow, it smells amazing. Yeah, that's again. The, the, the dilution that comes out helps to open up the flavors. The fact that it's a little bit chilled, especially on a hot day, is gonna, it's gonna match really well.、Um, and, and it's also, even though it is straight, there is none of that super high alcohol burn that you might associate with straight spirits. This is, this is the, a delicious place to start. Excellent choice. えー、ちょっと複雑にあの仕上がっているので、それをまた水割りにして、氷が溶けていく状態でどんどんどんどんまた変化していくのを楽しんでいただきたくて。And again, the, the single distillation, this is obviously sweet potato. There's, there's, no, there's no ambiguity there. This is, this is an, again an, another delicious product. ニュースタイル焼酎。これはオレンジ芋という香りの高いお芋でさつまいもで作った焼酎ですお花とかあのオレンジみたいな香りがしますそれを炭酸で割ってまたこう華やかな香りを楽しみながらシュワシュワと楽しんでもらえたらいいなと思っています。Yeah. You can, you can really、it, it, is the you pick up when you, when you smell it and but it does, it does still have that potato aspect it's a very very Fascinating noise. And it's very easy to see why this is popular style of, of,、uh, of drinking shochu, especially on a hot summer day. The, the effervescence is kind of lifting up the aromas, and yeah, there's almost 
notes of peach as well. This is, uh, it's amazing that this is something that basically just comes from potatoes mixed with corgi. Fascinating. And to finish off, we've got an immaculately poured hot water and shochu. This is actually the most popular style, the most popular way of drinking shochu. And it might sound a little bit strange, especially in a town that gets pretty hot in summer, but hot water and shochu is, is a fascinating way to drink as well. So please explain. Whether it's the heat or the specific shochu, I'm not sure, but it is so wide and mouth filling. The texture is it's 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 a beautiful oily texture and it, it's it's almost like if you were if you were drinking custard made out of potato. I don't know this maybe not the best description, but that again, it, it's amazing that you can get so many different characteristics and flavors from from the ingredients, and how the different ways that they are served, the different techniques, and, and even I'd say glassware, it, it, it has a massive impact on the way that these things taste. But this again, it's pretty pretty dangerous, I suspect, and I, and I can drink a lot of this for a long time. In all honesty, it's hard for me to think of a beverage that has this much diversity in the way that it's served and, and the kind of breadth of different flavors that come out from those serving styles. One of the things I'd like to know is um, from Tori-san, is what is, what makes Satsuma Imo so, uh, Imoshu so important for him? Kagoshima is a country country が、あの、場所って多分鹿児島 詰めてても、あの、美味しい焼酎って瓶の中でどんどん熟成して美味しくなるんですよ。その変化もすごく楽しくて。で、その焼酎この一杯で今日はお友達になれる。そうそうそう。焼酎は最高のコミュニケーション
the tartness from the romaine is coming out green. God, that's good. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Hong Kaka shot you with a splash of water. Excellent. Oh, wow. Should really open it up. Just like a good single malt? It's atmospheric yeah. distilled, so we kind of get those heavier kind of aromas. Are you, are you getting smoke? I'm getting a little bit of smoke. I could smell this all day. I could maybe drink it all day too. I think I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Match. It's quite cleansing. Mm -hmm. It's not overpowering. The finish for this just lasts forever. So this one's neat and it needs to be neat. I know nothing about shochu yet, but I, I know a lot about whiskey. And this is kind of on par for something that I would age in oak for 10 years. There's the different layers of flavors here, and the layers of flavors in this exquisite tart. Wow. This is neat, right? Yeah. So it's coming in at pretty much 26%. The alcohol is coming through the oil. So when, when Koji is doing its thing, mm -hmm. it brings out umami. The Koji matching with the umami from the cheese and the mushrooms, mm -hmm. it's just a, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a slam dunk, so no wonder it tastes so good. Mm. Here, the aroma is a lot lighter. So this one is actually being vacuum distilled. Okay. So you can kind of expect those sort of lighter, more floral kind of characters coming through. It's a lot more nuanced than some of the ones that we've had before. This is a lot different from any fish and chips that I've ever seen. <laughs> it cuts through some of the some of the oils from mm. the fish mm. as well. Honkaku imo shochu with hot water, oyu wari. Ooh. Okay, so that heat, it's going to cut through the oil. It cleanses your palate so that it's almost like the next bite is like the first bite. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of spirits that you can do things like this. This meal really highlights like the, the different possibilities with Honka Kushochu. We've, we've had it in multiple different ways. We haven't even mm -hmm. talked about cocktails or anything like that, yes, right? Yes. So like, I, right. I don't know, I, I, can't, I can't think of another spirit that you could maybe has this level, level of versatility. I might be a little bit biased, you know, as, a, as a whiskey guy. <laughs> whiskey guy, course, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, you know, I'm almost now a, a convert of, you know, the world of shochu. Okay. And you know, I want to talk to my friends and yeah. you know, in the whiskey world and like, hey, you might want to check this yeah, out check too. Check this out, yeah. yeah. It's been good to catch up. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey learning about this fascinating beverage. And I've developed a greater appreciation for Honkaku Imoshochu. But it's not just that. It's been fun. The history, the food, drinks, and the friends I've made along the way. I've learned so much. But what sticks with me the most is how closely intertwined Honka Kushochu is with the culture of Southern Kyushu. How relevant it is to the community as a whole, from the farmers, to the distillers, to the people who serve it and those who savour it. And let's not forget the outraged ghosts of carpenters and, allegedly, tight-fisted bosses. In a way, Shochu has transcended alcohol to have become as much a part of the region as that massive volcano everyone seems so cool with as a noisy neighbour. If you see Honkaku Imo Shochu on a menu, give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Until next time. Thank you very much, everybody, for the clapping. That was very, very nice. Uh, we really, really hope that you enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun putting it together. Um, there was so much more that we wanted to put in and uh, because we just, uh, the people that we met, they were just amazing, right? And uh, Yasuda-san is just talking to him. He's still so interested in, in learning about other things from the wine world. We were, we were talking about, um, wine and how it ages and how shochu will age in a similar way and 
if you're making shochu out of sweet potato, you'll actually find some of the same flavor compounds as what you'd get from uh, an aged Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, for example. And uh, and he was the conversation. He was getting so into it. He he thought about showing us some rice grains that he uses to make the koji, and he just charged off through a garden, standing on everything. It's like, oh no, don't damage the plants. But um, it was just just such an amazing guy to talk to. And there's to, I I really wish we'd had more time down there because yeah, those, you could do an episode on, on that guy alone, I'm sure. And that's not to take away from any of the other people. Um, Tori-san, he, he uh, down in his, his bar down in, in Kagoshima, just hilarious. Um, all, of, all of these people are people you want to hang out with, you want to drink with. And, and like hopefully what came through, you could kind of see how, how the shochu is sort of like a an amazing example of a social lubricant the way that it should be it's it's sort of it, it, it is so in the culture of southern Kyushu and that's why we really wanted to tell that story about about the the carpenters because that that was the first reference of shochu and written down but it was obviously already sort of locked into the culture that they clearly expected it was their right to be drinking shochu with the, with the guy who, who'd hired them for the contract, basically. And um, that kind of shows that, like, yeah, there's, there's the funny side of things is that they complained in such a passive aggressive way. But, uh, but it, the, the fact that they felt the right and, and to complain was, was just, it, it says a lot, I think. Um, so there were some questions that came through, and again, please, um, we're, we're not going to open up the floor for, for um, spoken questions today. It's probably not that kind of forum, but um, but if you if you have something, please, any comments um, that you wanted to share, and and the sorts of things, uh, if there's anything that you wanted to know, there were some questions that came through that we can uh, we can kind of go through, but. Um, uh, I think, first of all, um, about my tasting notes. Thanks, Gordon. Appreciate it. Um, and there, there was a question there uh, kind of right back at the beginning um, from, from Mick. Um, does the glass matter? And I think the answer to that is yes. Uh, for every beverage, whether you're drinking wine, sake, shochu, whiskey, um, a, a, a good glass is important. Um, but don't get too stuck on it. Um, if, if you're drinking, uh, I, I think a brandy balloon is going to be pretty solid. If you're heating up, the, I think probably these, these things are even better. A hundred and, no, sorry, 121 uh, distilleries uh, in Kagoshima at the moment. And yeah, it's, it's some of them pretty small. Um, that was, Kokobu is not a, not a huge distillery. Um, it's probably best like mid-size, whereas uh, Nakamura Shuzo is, is um, it's practically a one-man band. There, there is another guy that I saw walking around but um, and some, some ladies who are putting labels on and things like that. But um, yeah, Nakamura-san, he, he works hard. And when we arrived, I think this is part of the... This helps to explain, I think, the story that we're trying to tell is that these, these guys, they are such hard workers, guys, ladies, um, are such hard workers, and they really want people to understand. And we, he was so busy, he, he wasn't able to answer the messages all the time. We, we didn't really know for sure if we were going to be able to go and visit. When we got there, he's running around doing all sorts of things that literally cannot wait for uh, for some, some uh, film crew and presenter to just turn up. But when when we sort of started to explain it when he found out that i'd been working in a in a sake brewery the fact that we actually knew the same people uh from that sake brewery it, all of a sudden he, he just he went from having no time to talk about it to, to really wanting to show us everything and uh and he, he his passion i hope it comes through in the video because if it doesn't go there see him it will come through in person for sure it was yeah it's just and, and like I said, that's kind of where my uh, passion comes from is representing these people because they, they, don't, they don't have the time to make, do what they do, sleep and necessarily promote it sometimes. Uh, what, uh, there was another question, sorry, about um, what the temperature I was, was I was drinking the, the shochu. Um, I was just drinking it straight off the boiling basically. And it's going to cool down fairly quickly. So you'll find a sweet spot. Um, I don't think uh, for Richard's question that it's as important as it is probably for sake. 
um, it, it probably um, the pour is going to there's a lot more water as a that's been added as opposed to just straight sake. So I, I think you'll find a sweet spot as you drink it and um, and then just kind of you will see sometimes they'll blend it 50 50 sometimes they'll blend it 80 20 um, what they were. I think pouring the shochu in first and then, no, pouring the hot water in first and then topping it up with shochu. I don't know if there's any importance on that other than you know how much, uh, you've got more control probably over how much shochu goes in than the water. But uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's a big deal for myself. Um, so, The whiskey question, sorry, Mac. I I don't think I'm qualified to answer that from the from the one tour whether they're using the heads and the tails. Uh, I don't know how they cut it. Um, it's it's probably a little bit technical. I'll find out for you and let you know though, um, because it is it is a good question. But it didn't seem to be quite as. For those who don't know what we're talking about, when you when you do distillation, there's a there's a certain part where the the spirit is coming off the still where it's particularly good. And then there's a part where it's actually potentially dangerous um, and they won't put that in the bottle, hopefully. Uh, I don't know the specifics of it, Mac, but I'll find out for sure. And, uh, and I think, the question about vacuum distillation, um, it does bring out floral uh, aspects. It does bring out lighter, more elegant, delicate aspects. And I think that's the main reason why they'd employ that process. If you're trying to come through with something punchy, then you'd be doing vacuum. So you'd be doing um, atmospheric distillation. And if you're trying to do something a little bit more elegant, and that is one of the things that you can look for. If, you, if you're in Japan and you can find these bottles that, that I would suggest probably too cheap, but um, but those are the sorts of things. If you can find that, find out what it is, then you will be more likely to find a good food match. And the way I would always approach a food match is if something is is light and elegant, it's probably less good with cooked heavy flavors. And if something is big and punchy, it's probably less good with uh, with raw or this is sort of sashimi start of the meal kind of things um you want to probably have something elegant that matches with something elegant um oh, the hot water thing um uh about how much the 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 mix is i don't have one of these glasses here um i think i might have one at home but this they'll have lines on the glass and, and you sort of be able to aim for it. And they have some words for it that are kind of, some of them a little bit insulting, um, suggesting that some people can't handle their drinks, but uh, quite often 50-50 is a pretty pretty common split. Um, there's, yeah, 20, 80 uh, shots, more, more water in the shot share. Um, I personal story made the mistake of asking someone in Fukuoka uh, for a little less water and he chose to read that as being more spirit. I actually just wanted to have less water and taste the spirit and he just filled it up to the top with spirit. And uh, I think that's about the point where my night started going wrong. But <laughs> it was it was a funny one. Uh, okay, thank you for the questions. Um, the question about Koji. So when it, there's a fairly good explanation or there's a pretty good explanation in the book so definitely if, if you are a little bit confused uh cross-reference back but um for, for sake brewing yellow koji uh is the is the type that is traditionally used and um but in the warmer climates what they found is that that they would they were kind of losing the, the instead of brewing, um, in, instead of fermenting well, they were actually losing it. It just kind of, it wasn't fermenting, it was kind of rotting and that, that'd spoil. And what they discovered is that if they used what is called black koji, which is what they'd been using to, to do the process down in Okinawa, where it's very hot, if they started doing that, then um, the black koji is a different strain of, of, the, of the mold and it creates a much higher uh, acid content. And that acidity would actually protect the, the fermenting mash uh, from spoiling. And not so, uh, relatively recently, there was a mutation of the black koji and now they've got kind of white koji. 
Um, so the white koji is something that I think probably Dave, who, who asked the question, will know about from sake. That is used in sake production more, more recently. Uh, and it produces very, very um, high acid, um, very, very sort of citric notes. And so the white koji and the black koji are most used for shochu production. And, um, and for sake production, they're more likely to use yellow koji. Uh, okay, I think we maybe got the same question or maybe it was doubled, but um, honestly, uh, what shochu is good for ice water or, or um, sparkling water? Uh, personal preference. It's uh, totally, totally personal preference. And my personal preference changed after doing this project because I was always just drinking it with over ice because I was treating it probably a little bit more like I would be treating a vodka. Um, I think if you're, if you're having aged um, shochu, you probably want to taste it and understand that. So maybe a splash of water, but probably not a dash of soda because the soda might dilute it to the point where you're kind of losing the things that made it interesting. Um, I know that the shochu that had the, uh, the kind of orange that was made with the orange potato that had this really interesting peach note. Oh my God, that stuff was amazing with sparkling water with, uh, with soda. The, it was dangerous in how much that you would want to drink that in an afternoon, uh, but it was absolutely spectacular. So maybe those sorts of notes that are coming through that are a little bit fruitier, I suspect that's where the Chuhai boom maybe came from. Someone did something like that and we're like, oh, this is amazing. And then it kind of ran with its own steam. And now maybe Chuhai is not the way that it should be, the, the pre, pre-mixed cans of, uh, of, of shochu. But yeah, if you do find uh, a nice, elegant, slightly fruitier style, a splash of soda is going to elevate those, those things. The bubbles will help to carry them to you. Um, but yeah, it's that one, that one in particular, if you can find that anywhere, find it. It was amazing. And uh, I think last question. Um, oh, no, there was something else. My apologies. Oh, okay. So um, the viscosity, the age stuff, uh, Dave Miwa, um, is, is definitely thicker. It, it moves slower in the glass. Um, the, the younger stuff, I think the younger stuff is probably about the same. Um, temperature will change a little bit. Personally, I didn't notice too much, uh, but def except for the age stuff. And the age stuff was definitely, you swirl it around and it, it's a lot uh, oilier, um, creamier, um, texture, silkier probably as well. It's one of the things that age will affect it. Um, but yeah, it was, it was uh, age I think is probably the primary thing from my experience, uh, but I'll probably have to look into that a little bit more. And, um, and one comment. So we had, uh, this, this is from uh, Yuji-san, um, who is uh, definitely one of the people we thank for the, for the, for the project and how it went through. Um, these shots that we have here, we really, really hope that people noticed how different they were. And if you were to have the mass produced, sorry, um, yeah, mass produced uh, multiple distillation, it'd be really hard to tell what was made from sweet potato, what was made from rice, what was made from barley. And even if it's not something that you're necessarily trained yourself to pick up, they are all four very clearly different products. And, uh, and we really, really hope that you notice that because it is what one of the many things that makes Honkaku shochu uh, so cool. It's, uh, yeah, a, a very, very interesting thing. And uh, last question from Mac, does it age well? Yes. And uh, it, doesn't need, it doesn't need to be, um, there are people who are making barrel aged and stuff like that, but the way it ages in the bottle is, is, um, is pretty special. And uh, unfortunately I haven't tasted any of this yet, but what, uh, what we were told by Yasuda-san uh, down at uh, Kokobu Distillery, is that sweet potato shochu will bring out um, the same chemical compounds as you would find in like an aged Sauvignon Blanc from uh, 
like Bordeaux blends type thing, like the Sauvignon Sauvignon uh, blends. So yeah, definitely something um, something pretty special. So definitely worth trying to trying to check out, find for yourselves. Um, so I believe we pretty much covered everything there, uh, and. We did talk a little bit about food matching. Um, you've got this with some, some suggestions. Uh, I assuming at least some people have some shots you left after the tasting. Uh, I noticed that when I was sitting in the bar um, drinking, everybody else started uh, sipping a lot more. So that was, that was good to see. Thanks for joining in. Um, but try, I, I'm, most people are gonna eat tonight. Um, try and do some food matches with shochu. Try different temperatures. Try them with a, an ice cube over ice straight and just sort of see how it works because honestly, like it, this is a beverage that is, is tailor-made to match with food. It's, it's uh, just, just absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, so to wrap things up, uh, thanks everybody so much for, for joining us here today. Um, honestly, I'll be back in, in Kagoshima as soon as possible uh, and I will be visiting other places as, as, as soon as possible as well because Japan has so many amazing stories. Uh, each location, each, each area has, um, has different specialities that, that the world needs to know. Um, and I wanted to thank uh, the, the people from, from my team, from the Craft Instinct team. That was, that was really, really cool. Great project to work with. Um, obviously, the people from uh, the Japanese Sake and Shochi Makers Association, uh, Yuchi-san, Baba-san, Itsunomiya-san, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, don't forget these booklets that they kindly supplied and, and stuff because you will find an absolute treasure here. Uh, you've got the website on the back. If you're in Tokyo, go and visit the, um, the showroom. Um, you can find more or less the same thing, but with, um, with uh, about sake and Nihonshu. Um, and yeah, if you, if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to contact me directly, uh, whether it's email, Instagram, whatever. Uh, I'm a very easy person to find because there's literally only 30 people in the world with my family name and two of them are in this room right now. So uh, if you see a Wayne Shannon spelled that way, it's me. Uh, any questions, if I don't know the answer, I'll find out and let you know because uh, the more people know about this, this stuff, the better. Um, yeah, well, again, thank you so much. And, and maybe to round things off, we're not gonna do a final kampai, which is quite common for these sorts of things. I think we can do a final ayatazo. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be way, way more authentic. So um, if you still have anything left, please say yes. But if you still have anything left, um, let me put my screen up. Feel free to turn your cameras on if you've, if you've, uh, if you've turned it off. Ah, nice to see you've got some left there, Mick. Excellent, nice work. <laughs> and feel free, feel free. I guess while we wrap things up, to uh, to turn your mics back on as well, and um, and then we can we can all do a an a to uh, to finish off. I'm looking at my screen. I should be looking at the camera. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much. Oyatazo. Thank you for joining us. This concludes the Getting to Know Honkaku Shochu session. For more information about Shochu, please check these additional resources.